Hey you guys, printing labels in FileMaker. Someone asked me a question about this and I thought it was an interesting topic to make a little video about. And I've made the simplest, uh, tiniest little example database where you have a little product, a description of that product and a price tag. And let's say that you have one of these, one of these super cute little printers that spits out one label at a time. These are super handy, especially when you just need a single label once in a while. Uh, these are uh, pretty useful uh, to just print one label at a time. Okay, so I've made a little, uh, put a little label printer picture here. Let's say that I would like to print this uh, label for this product so that we can stick that label on that box. Okay, very simple. We need to start a new layout. Um, based on the product and I'm going to call this one RPT label. I always use a report. Uh, you could also use it print label. Call it print label. That's fine too. Let's say printer. Let's say um, well I actually don't want to to use labels here because I'm, I've got a single label so I'm just going to use a report here and then I'm going to not do any of this. I actually don't need any of this. Okay I'll, I'll use these here. And I'll just uh, skip all of this because I don't need any of this. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, this is actually not right. Uh, I'm going to go into edit. I'm going to go to views. And I'm going to say that I would like to have this in a form view. There you go. Um, yeah, okay. And I also don't need the header. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the header. Just hit delete. Okay, cool. This is more like it. Okay. And uh, the thing is, with these labels, they're very tiny, so I'm going to need to have something like this. Maybe the description, and then that could be a little bit bigger, and then maybe the price. Let's say we put the price up here, and we put it a bit bigger. There you go, and then maybe I'll just put this in a currency. And we'll just do, I, I've got this in euros, which is cool, and like something like this. I don't really need to make this larger. Uh, let's see what that does. Okay, that's not very good. Um, with this thing, um, maybe let's make it a bit s smaller like so. And I'll just do this. Okay, how about that? Yeah, that's looking better. And maybe this one could be bold. Yeah, sweet. Okay, cool. So this is my label. Now, in order to know what kind of size of label I need to get, I need to probably do a little testing. And one way to test it, this out is to just make a little square. And now this one covers everything, so I could make that one oof, over here. I could give it no non-fill color, and then I can see through it, but I can give it some uh, borders here. Let's make them black. And then, yeah, so we've got our little border and then what we could do is we could go to the size here and then we could set, now it's set to point. If we click point it goes to inches and to centimeters and then you can kind of set the size of this um, little square there or the rectangle to match the size of your label. And if you do that then you kind of know, and you can make this bigger if you want, you can kind of know um, what the size of your label is might have to put it up in the corner there and then you can just kind of um, and you can just manually enter stuff here let's say the width is 10 and the height let's say it's 5 might be too big for my layout but there you go so if if I would have a label of 10 by 5 centimeters and this one if I print it it should probably match pretty well but with these labels you always have to kind of print it and look at it and maybe adjust a little bit move some things around to just get it to be just right and you can like kind of make this one smaller as well and then when you're done you can just delete your little um, square or rectangle and then you can just print your label that way Okay, cool. So um, this is just a little bit of experimenting, of course, to get it right. Now, how do I make my button work so I can print my label? Well, let's make a little script and it's going to be a very simple script. Print single label, label like so. And that's going to be go to layout. And I'm going to go to my print label layout. Then I'm going to do a little print set up so that I can say I'm going to turn the dialog off and I can specify whether if I want this um, in 
like portrait or landscape mode and <coughs> I'm not sure for my label might be landscape I'm not really sure we have to test this out and then the next one would be print and there you can say for instance I would like the dialog off you can specify the printer options and you can just select your uh, label printer if you want I don't happen to have one on this computer right now so I'll just keep my normal printer and then I'll just say give me um, only the current record for instance and then I can say print okay cool and then I get a last step go to layout and then I go back to my original layout and that kind of does that print for me so what I can do here I can save this uh, script and then I can go to my little button here and I can say button setup perform script print single label change to a hand but uh, over the cursor okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna test this script but I'm gonna use my script debugger because again I don't have that actual um, printer so I'll just skip over that print step so now in theory if I would just click that button then my uh, script would run I would go to this layout um, this is what my label looks like <clears throat> then I would do a little print setup and I would do a little print step here I'm gonna skip over this one or you know I'll just I'll just print right here boom it's gonna print and then I'm gonna go to my original layout and there you go so now as you can hear it's printing on my normal printer which is not really necessary but doesn't matter okay so that's kind of cool that's pretty simple and easy now what if you have uh, this product like in your store and you want to sell it but you have a bunch of them like you have 10 of them then you don't want to have to like cl click this button um, you don't want to have to click this button 10 times for every single um, power saw that you want to um, label so you can uh, print multiple labels in a couple of different ways so the first thing you could do is you could uh, turn the dialog on and if we do that and we save the script then what you can do is you can just click this button and I'm actually holding the script here so what would happen then is this would pop up and you could simply say how many copies you need so you could say well I've got 10 of them then you can hit 10 and you can hit print and that way um, 10 labels would be printed for this uh, for this product I'm not gonna print right now because I don't need to uh, okay cool um, okay so that's one way to do it now if you're gonna um, click this button and this pops up if you have users who um, are not used to uh, so many options they might mess things up because they might choose the wrong printer or they might mess these up uh, there might be situations in which you don't want this to happen it's just too much stuff that could go wrong so um, there's another way that you can go and uh, uh, fix this problem and that's a more of a file maker type way of working so what you could do is when your user clicks this button you could have a little pop-up that asks the user how many um, labels do you want to print and then you can just have your script print exactly that many uh, labels so that your user doesn't have to worry about all those print options okay so uh, how would we go about doing that well we need a few things for that first of all um, if we're gonna ask the user to um, specify the amount of prints then we need a field for that uh, so we can temporarily enter that um, that number into that field so let's go to file manage database and let's make a new field let's make it a global field and let's say amount of prints okay and I'm gonna make that a number field in my type and I'm gonna create this one now I've made it uh, I've called it G the reason is uh, that I would like this field to be available everywhere I'd like to have this to have only one value for all of the records and I want this to be um, a different and a specific to each individual user so if you're using a database with multiple users working on this at the same time uh, I want this value to be uh, unique to each and every user and that is what a global field does so I'm gonna to go to storage and select the use global storage and then I'm gonna hit OK so now I've got my field where I can temporarily store the amount of labels I would like to print 
Now we need to have a script for that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new one right here. And this is going to be print multiple labels. Cool. So let's cheat here. Okay, I've got this one that I'm going to use again, this one that I'm using again. I'm just copy all of these. And I'm going to paste them in here. Okay, so um, okay, before I do this, I would like to have a custom dialog. So I'm going to do show custom dialog. And I'm going to put this one on top. Because I want to start by asking my user how many uh, labels he would like to print. So I'm going to see amount to print. How many labels would you like to print? And then I've got OK and a cancel. That's good. But I also have extra input fields here. And then I can show input put field one. And I'm going to say amount of prints. That's my field. And then I'm going to use the password. No, not use the password. I'm going to put a label and say amount. There you go. OK, cool. Let's see what that looks like. Now, it is possible that there is still an amount in there from before. And you don't want to accidentally have a wrong amount in there. But you do want to maybe make it easy for the user and just uh, automatically enter the value of one. So that if they just want to print one label, they only have to click OK. So I'm going to do set field. And again, I'm going to want this to be the first step that happens. And I'm going to say set the field of amount of prints. Set that to the value of one. Okay, cool. So now by default, I will have one, but I can also just alter that field if I want to. Let's try out these few steps already to see what happens. So let's save this script. Oh, um, and then also because um, in this step, I have an OK and a cancel button. If people press the cancel button, I want this whole thing to stop. So uh, in order for that to happen, I need to add an if statement. And the if statement is if get last message, message choice, that's a very difficult one to say, equals two, because that's the second button, then I would like to halt my script. Okay, let's test this whole thing up to here. Let's hit save. And now this is a new um, script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my layout. I'm going to go into my button setup right here. And I'm going to attach this other button to my, this other script to my button. And then I'm just going to um, get my script debugger out just to see what's happening. So I'm going to click this button and then it's going to set my amount of prints. And actually I need to maybe have my data viewer here. My amount of prints is now empty. And I'm going to set it to one. So now it has the value one. So then I'm going to have a button that shows up and that says, how many labels would you like to print? And now I can see that the one is already selected. So I can just as easily type another amount and hit OK. And then um, my script would continue. If I try my cancel button, then if last message choice is two, so let's try and see. Okay, that's what happened, and then my script is going to halt. Okay, so cool. So that uh, kind of works. If I would actually turn this off, three cancel. Okay, that stops it. Four and cancel. Okay, cancel stops everything. That's kind of good. Okay, um, so far so good. Now, what do I need to do um, after this step? So I've entered an amount. Now I could set this amount as a variable. But because it is in a global field, it is always going to be available everywhere. But also, um, if I go to my print layout, that is also based on the same table. So that um, amount value is available there anyway. So I don't really need to take this as a variable. I can just uh, access that amount value anywhere I am. So I'm going to go to my layout of print label. And then what I need to do is I need to print, but I need to print like over and over and over again until I've reached the, uh, the amount. And the way that you can do that is you can loop a part of your script and then you can count the amount of times you have looped and then go up to a certain amount and then stop your loop. So that's kind of the theory. Um, which part do I have to loop? Well, I have to loop this print part. So after this, I'm going to do a loop. 
right here. And when I enter a loop, I automatically also get an end loop. So now I need to print, but I need to print a certain amount of time. Actually, I'm gonna uh, put it like so, so that the print setup happens first and then my loop starts happening because it's only the actual printing itself that needs to loop. Um, but now how do I, because if I do this, this is going to keep on printing forever and ever uh, until the end of time, so that's not good. I need to have it uh, stop at a certain point. Um, and when do it, does it need to stop? Well, it needs to stop when I've reached the amount of uh, prints that I want to make and that I entered into that one field. So I need to count the amount of loops. Um, how do I do that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a counter. So set variable. And I'm going to call this variable counter and I'm going to give it the value of one. Okay, so now I'm starting off with a variable that has the value one. Then my loop starts, then I can print and what I can do then is I can set my variable, the counter. I can set this to the value that it has, counter plus one. How cool is that? So what it does, and we can actually test this. I'm going to save this and I'm going to, uh, how do I do that again? Script, oh, edit. I'm going to disable the print step for a second now and I'm going to save and run my script to kind of show you what happens there. If I press this button, I can do this. How many do I want to print? Let's say five, okay. Let's skip through this. Okay, so here, this is when it happens. I'm gonna set a variable called counter and I'm gonna use the value one. Okay, so my counter has the value one. So then my loop starts and then my uh, print happens and then my variable counter goes up with uh, the, its own value. So now it's one plus one. So if you look here, if I go through this step, it goes up to two. And then uh, my loop happens again, and it goes up to three, four, five. See, it keeps on going. Now, the only thing I need to add is that it needs to stop at a certain point. Um, it needs to stop as soon as I have reached, uh, as this number is the same as that number. Basically, when my counter reaches the same uh, value as the um, G amount of print value. So I'm going to stop this for a second and return back to my script here. Oops, I have to close these and get them out of the way. So, um, so what I do is I print my first um, label and then I set my label a value to a higher label. Let's say that I've set my value to two. Okay, let's first make it exit loop script, right? Let's do exit loop if, uh, exit loop if my dollar counter is equal to my G amount of prints. That's logical, right? So let's say that I've set my, my um, amount to be printed to two. So what's gonna happen is my counter goes to the value of one, then I'm gonna print, then my value of one is gonna go to the value of two, and then it's going to say if my counter, uh, which is now two, is equal to the amount of prints, which is uh, two, I wanted to print two, then I'm going to exit my script, which in this case is kind of a problem because I've only printed one. So my counter goes to one, I print, I set my counter to two, and then it says, oh, two equals two, so stop. So if I want to do this, I either put this counter to zero or I put this, this step after my check here so that my counter goes to one, I print this label, then I'm gonna check if I wanna exit my script, no, because my counter is one, but I wanna print two, then my counter goes to two, my loop repeats itself, it prints, then um, my counter is two, and my product amount, G amount of prints is also two. So then my, um, my loop stops. I'll show you what I mean. Let's try this again, data viewer, let's run this script. And let's save it. Okay, so now if we're gonna go and say, I would like to say F2, let's maybe make it three. Okay. I'm gonna go to my print layout, cool, print setup, set variable, counter one. So my counter is now one, and I would like to print three labels. So what's gonna happen? Uh, first of all, my print will happen, which is now disabled. 
then I'm gonna exit if my counter is equal to the amount of prints. No, my counter is one and I've just printed one. Cool, let's continue my script here. Then my counter goes up to two and I print again. My counter goes up to three and I print again. And then it says, do we wanna exit? Yes, because these values are the same. And now I have exited my print. So with this order, with this order, and you always have to tr uh, pay very close attention if you're using a counter and a loop script and an exit loop, you have to make sure that everything is in the correct order or that you use the correct fa uh, values. You could also start this at zero and then these could be in a different order. But you always have to test thoroughly to see if this all goes well. So if you do this, then uh, your script is gonna work and it's gonna print exactly the amount of labels you would like to print, uh, depending on that value that you just kind of entered in there. So now what you could do is you would just enter a value here and it would print on your printer the exact amount of labels and you would just end up back here. So all of that is pretty cool and this makes it very easy for the user, not a lot of options and not a lot of stuff that can go wrong. Now, what if you don't have one of those cute little label printers, but you have those kinds of sheets? Um, those kinds of sheets, I think they're maybe cheaper, they don't require a special, um, a special label printer, and um, they allow you to print a lot of different labels um, at the same time. Now these things are pretty cool and pretty handy, but they also have a little bit of a downside. What if you want to print, let's say, um, 10 labels for this product and three labels for this product and then four labels for this product, what you're gonna end up with, with is you're gonna have a bunch of uh, a bunch of sheets with a whole bunch of empty labels. Um, so that's not good. So these things have their pros and their cons, but let's see how we can deal with all these pros and all these cons. Okay, the first thing is our uh, print layout uh, like this. Uh, it's not going to be very good because um, I need to have multiple, uh, as you can see, multiple labels on one sheet. Some of them only have two columns, some of them have three. So you have to look at the labels that you have, first of all, to know how to set up your print layout. I'm going to manage my layouts and I'm going to duplicate this print label here. I'm going to call this one print label sheet. So let's open that one. And what you need to do with this label, you have to go to your printing layout and you have to um, specify the amount of columns that you wanna have. Some of them have two, some of them have three columns. Um, that depends on the labels that you're working with. And then you can uh, decide how they're gonna print across first or down first. Um, okay, that's about good. So now you can see in my layout that I'm gonna have to maybe make my layout a bit smaller or my label here. Otherwise it's not gonna fit. There you go, there. And of course, again, this requires testing. You need to do a couple of test prints to see what's going on. Um, and then let's exit our layout. Let's see what's going on. Let's go into preview. And now I can see that I have my three different products here and they're all showing up on my label which is pretty cool. And if you really want to kind of fine tune the printing of your label, again, use a little um, square here, a rectangle, just put it all the way up top and to the left, and then just give it a little, um, no fill, but a border like so, and then just try to fit it exactly uh, nicely. And then let's try and see. Okay, so this, if you print this, on a normal white sheet of paper and then you hold it up against the light in front of your label sheet then you can very easily see whether if this is going well or not. Um, if you have, because that's kind of annoying now that I only have three labels, I'll just uh, make an extra product here. Uh, boom. Um, Okay, if I do this, then we can see, um, you have to make sure that the height is kind of correct because otherwise it will start to drift. 
and your labels will start to drift towards the bottom and they will get more and more and more uh, further away from the labels that you have. Um, so you have to just play around with it a little bit and tinker a bit just till you get it just right. I'm not going to waste too much time on setting this up. This is a little bit of tinkering and playing around with it. But what you can see, the problem that I'm having right now is that I've got uh, one single record for each product but that's not very handy if you have for instance five electric drills and seven pneumatic punches and 14 circular saws because then you want to have each record like multiple times on this sheet um, and in this case that's not working and also if you would print this out you would have like four labels on one sheet and the rest of your sheet would be unused um, but the problem as well is if you take off these four labels you can't really use this sheet again because then um, you'd get in trouble the next time you print because the next time if you're printing like a full page the first four labels would be like missing because they've already been taken out and then you kind of get into trouble so that's not very handy okay so how can we solve these problems um, let's say you want to print uh, a bunch of these and a bunch of these. The best way to, to go about is to not um, print every two uh, separately, every product separately, and just have four for these and three for these. The best way is to first make up a whole list of um, the exact amount of labels that you would like to print for each product and to uh, make that list and make it as huge as possible so that you can print a whole bunch of different sheets um, with a whole bunch of different labels, the exact amount of labels for each product uh, so that you only end up at the end and maybe you're printing like 10 different sheets but they're all full and you only end up with maybe one like um, sheet that has not been used up completely. Now how could you set up such a list of uh, labels? You could do that by making a related table for printing. Let's go to File Manage database and what we will do is we will create a new table and we'll call that one print labels print label sheet let's call let's call it that and what we would do is we would give that an ID which is a number which is a serial number let's call, give it a product ID FK whoops that's not right product ID FK which is a number and then um, what else do we need uh, I think for now this is good um, and then let's say actually that's kind of all I need I think yeah let's go to relationships and then let's say that the product ID needs to be related to the product ID of K and let's say that we will allow the creation of records do we need to allow we yeah, sure we'll, we'll allow the creation of records okay cool Okay, so now what we can do is we can maybe set this one here so, just so we can see what's going on. And we'll do print label sheet. We'll do these options. Yeah, sure, that else fine. We'll just put these on for now, just so we can see what we're doing. We don't really need those, and we don't even have to really display this, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, 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 let's make these default so that they get a little bit of a border. Now this ID is only a very small field, and the product IDFK is also just basically a very small one. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't, have, to, this doesn't have to be this big, but okay, that's fine. Okay, let's say that we would like to print a couple of these and then a couple of those and a couple of those. Um, so what we need to do is I have a little button. Um, let's say, let's go to edit layout. We need a, a way to kind of say how many uh, products we want to print. So let's make a button that says print X amount. Okay, cool. And let's give that a nice color. Great. Okay, and let's make a script for this. Let's do plus print x amount. Okay, what do we need to do? Um, we need to do the same thing as we did here. Set field, show custom dialog, all of this stuff. 
set variable we need to loop exit loop and loop okay all of this stuff we're gonna print the uh, copy this and paste it in here so we're gonna set the amount of prints because we're gonna use that same field we're gonna set it to one how many labels would you like to print um, if uh, you press cancel and hold the script then we're gonna set the variable to one and then we're gonna loop but what we're gonna do right now is not loop uh, the printing but we're gonna loop the creation of new records um, so what are we gonna do here we're going to um, first of all we're gonna at the top do a little bit of a freeze window but we're gonna set this after the custom dialog so I'm gonna set it here freeze window because what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a different layout and I don't want to really see that happening okay if we exit our layout we can see that we have our print label sheet we'll put it up like this there we go okay so I'm gonna set my counter to one then what am I gonna do I'm gonna create a new record new record request and then I'm gonna exit when I have reached the amount of new records um, that I would like to create now there is one thing I need to add though um, I'm going to have to set my product IDFK in here so I will need to at some point here maybe do a set variable and I'm gonna say product ID because I would like to note oops I didn't fill this one in products ID I have to set my product ID as a value in here so that I know which label I would like to print so I've got my set variable product ID I'm gonna set my counter I'm gonna make a new record request and I'm gonna do a set field to set my product ID in this field right here so I'm gonna do print label sheet product ID FK and the value that I'm gonna put in there is this value so I'm gonna just copy this over here then I'm gonna to go to my set field and I'm going to specify my product ID here cool um, okay and then in the end I'm gonna go back to my original layout so normally speaking what this does is it will create the amount of records for my product that I would like to print okay let's save this and let's see what it does let's close this let's go back to my products here let's set up my button let's do perform script for my button print x amount and let's go into my button setup to check this button right here okay let's try this out let's see what happens um, let's go to my script debugger and data viewer so I can follow what's going on let's click this button okay how many labels would you like to print let's say I want to print five for this tool okay um, then I'm gonna freeze my window set my variable my product ID is one cool so then I'm gonna go uh, into my loop oh, I think I've forgotten to go to my other layout here oops let's stop okay I've forgotten to put in that script step so let's go here and that's what this why the script debugger is so good it allows you to spot mistakes here I have to go to layout and I have to of course go to my print label sheet layout cool okay cool that was why, why my freeze uh, window my freeze window was in there yeah so let's try this again okay let's go in here uh, the amount I want to print is five cool freeze my window set my counter to one go to my different layout okay and now I'm gonna create a new record and I'm gonna set my product ID as one in there cool I'm gonna set variable counter plus one so now my counter is on two and the amount that I want to print is five so let's see what this does and if I can just continue ahead this makes three four this is the fifth one what is gonna happen now I'm gonna exit and there I end up here again cool let's close these and now I've got five records created here so that's the total amount I would like to print which is cool and then I can go to my nomadic punch and I can say give me the amount of three labels I can go to the next product and say give me seven labels for this one and then go to my chainsaw and give me 
uh, another four labels for this. So now if I go and look in my print label sheet and I can see that these are all the labels that I would like to print. And the cool thing now is I've got 19 of them and if I would have more products then I could make a whole list of them and I can just print, press print one time, put a bunch of these label sheets in my printer and I can just print the whole bunch without wasting too many labels. So to do that I need a second button uh, I'm gonna copy this one, I'm gonna copy it down here, I'm gonna give it a different color and I'm gonna say print label sheets. Okay cool, so if I would like to print my label sheets then of course I'm gonna need a layout kind of like this one, so I'm gonna go to um, file manage layouts, I'm gonna duplicate this one print label sheet I just call this one two. Uh, print label sheet two because this one, the first one is based on the products table, but I would like to create one that is based not on the products but on the print label sheet. But I do still want to use the fields from my products table. This is all from my products. Good. So I'm going to exit my layout, and if I preview. What happens now is I get electric drill multiple times and then I get my pneumatic punch a couple of times and then I get my circular saw a couple of times and then if I go to my next page I get a bunch of other ones. Now for me this isn't really working very well because my page setup is actually wrong. I need to set this up like so. And of course then my labels are all messed up. Um, let's just go in my edit layout, let's go here, let's say that I want to print using two columns. I did, I just kind of uh, guessed a bit as to what uh, size this all had to be, so you guys will have it a bit more properly. Okay, this is better. So I've got a bunch of labels for my electric drill, for my pneumatic punch, my circular saw, and see I get a, a next page and I'm not, not losing any labels. The only one that I'm losing here is the last one on this sheet which will not be used but by then I will have all my labels for all my products. So that's pretty good and a pretty efficient way to print this stuff out. So, okay so now I need to print uh, this one out uh, using this button and of course in my script I also have to determine that my um, my print setup needs to be not uh, like this but like so but uh, well, that doesn't matter. Okay. Um, so now I have to print, print, um, print sheet, I'll just call it print sheet. So now it's very simple, I will do a freeze window, I will do a go to layout, and the layout I'm going to go to is going to be the print label sheet 2, then I'm going to do a print setup, and it's actually in this one that I have to make sure that it is a portrait mode print and then I'm gonna do a print with the dialog off and I'm gonna uh, specify the options here which print right I want to use and I want to print not only the current record but all of the records being browsed okay that's what I want to print and then in the end I want to go to layout original layout that's what I would like to do so for now, for this exercise, I will just uh, edit and disable this print step right here because I don't want to actually print these. And then what we can do is just attach this to this, um, let's go to the button setup, attach this uh, print sheet script to my button. You have to always be very careful when you copy over buttons that you don't uh, leave the previous script attached to it. So let's go to my script debugger and data viewer and if we print this one what will happen then is we will go to our print label sheet 2 and now of course you can't see it because it's in uh, browse mode it's not in preview mode. You could maybe go into preview mode. There you go but then I add that that, that has uh, cancelled my script of course. So that what, it, what it's going to do now is going to just print all of these sheets. So now you have to put a bunch of papers in your printer and just have it print all those sheets. Okay, I kind of ruined that script there. So print label sheets, it's going to go there, it's going to print 
and it's going to go back to the original layout. So just simply clicking this button will now set in motion the print of not only this, these labels, but all of the labels uh, in all of your uh, all of your layouts. So what you could do um, right now is you can take this one step further, and you could say in your print label sheet you can make like a summary count. Of the amount of labels and you could make that a summary field and then you could say um, I want to see the uh, count of uh, ID which is always going to have a value in it so you can count the amount of records you have okay and then what you could also do is go to file manage database and you can change this relationship because you're not actually creating records manually through this relationship you could say give me an X join and what that does is whatever product you are on it's going to show all of the print label sheet um, records so if you do that I'm gonna save this okay so what's gonna happen then is all of a sudden I will see all the labels that are going to be printed so that's kinda handy now I don't really need these I don't really need these but what I could do is I could simply change these um, products. Can I do this? Let's try this out. I don't really know what this is going to do because this is kind of a relationship that goes the other way around. Nope, that's not working. Uh, what I need to do is create a duplicate of this one. Before I do, I'm going to give this one a color. I'll give this one a color. Cool. So, ooh, that's an ugly color. So I'm going to alt drag this one or what I could also do is click this one and hit the two plus signs here and then I'm going to uh, relate the product IDFK to the product IDFK here. I'm going to call this one products print. Cool. And then in this layout I can get the product name from products print and then we should get the correct name. See, so now I can see exactly which labels are going to print and I can even add on the top here from product print my, no, no, from print label sheet my count and I can say amount of labels Let's have a look. So I've got 19 labels that are going to print. So I could add some more. I could say uh, print me two more of these. And then I've got 21 labels that are going to print. And my whole list of labels that are going to be printed are um, on top here. So that's kind of cool. And this way I can just print my whole uh, set of papers. Now, um, there is another step that I could add to my script. I could make it so that as soon as I uh, click this print button and my labels start printing, I could add to my script, which I have here, I could add other steps here to this script to kind of delete um, all these labels so that they are cleared out afterwards. But what if something goes wrong during your print? You hit the print button and all of a sudden you notice that um, uh, you've had the wrong paper in your printer then you don't want to lose all this stuff so what you could do is you could create an extra button and maybe make it red and that is a button that you could use to for instance clear all labels whoa that's not correct there you go and then you can make a script for it that just kind of um, And this way you have it on a separate button so you don't have to um, really worry about this happening automatically or happening too soon. Uh, freeze window, go to layout, let's go to our... Um, it doesn't really matter, whichever one is based on the print label sheet. Let's do uh, go to layout, show all records, then you can say delete all records with the dialog off and then you could say um, go to layout original layout there you go let's save this then let's attach in the button setup to this button our clear all, all labels let's keep this one checked and let's try this out see what it does clear all labels boom and all the labels are gone and then you can start later on with a clean sheet and start adding uh, other labels again there you go, change all five times. 
Okay, so this is all good, uh, but what if you print a whole bunch of labels and then you end up with a sheet that's only partially used? Uh, a way to deal with that is to simply add uh, blank labels to the top. You could add um, blank labels and then uh, those will not really print anything. So if you have a sheet with a couple of blank labels on top, um, then you don't really have a problem and you can reuse that sheet. One thing to think about though is if you use a partially used sheet in your printer, it could kind of peel off while you're printing. So it's a bit of a danger. You have to check with your printer if that actually works or not and if you're willing to do that or not. But if you really want to use up all your labels, you could just add some empty labels. Uh, let's make a script for that, shall we? Um, well, first of all, we need to determine how we're going to um, uh, call these, what are we going to call these labels. So what I would like to do is I would like to go in here and I would like to add a blank field. Let's just call it blank. And then let's hit OK. The reason we need that is because we have to kind of sort these labels some way. Um, let's make this a bit smaller. Let's add, oops, let's add a field here from print label sheet. Let's add blank. like this blank because of course these labels that are blank they need to be up top uh, because otherwise it's not going to end well they need to be on the top of our layout and so we need to use some form of sorting to get these to be on top let's make this blank a checkbox set and let's call this one blank with the value blank Cool. Uh, actually, I don't really want to see this word, so I'm going to make this smaller and I'll just make this one the checkbox a little bigger. Let's look at the size of the checkbox. In points, this is a, a height of 21. Let's do a width of 21 as well. Is this cool? Yeah, this is cool. And let's put it here. Okay, so what we need to achieve is that uh, if there are blank records, let's say you want to print a bunch of uh, bunch of these, print seven of these, and then you know that you have a sheet that has a couple of blank records, so we need to be able to add blanks. So let's do let's do add blanks, and let's make this one uh, yet another color. There you go. Let's make a script for this and uh, let's call this script at blank blank labels and it's basically going to do the same thing right it's going to do the same thing as this one no as this one um, yeah it's going to do the exact same thing so let's copy the whole thing over and let's paste the whole thing in here and the custom dialog is amount of blanks. How many blank labels would you like to add to the top? Again, if you hit cancel, the whole thing stops, freeze the window, set variable. Do I need to take this variable? Uh, nope, because um, it's not relevant anymore. I'm gonna go there, create new record request. I don't need to set this. Oh, but I do need to set another value. I was actually too quick with this. Set field blank and set the value blank. Be sure to put this between quotation marks because it's a simple value that we're gonna put. Okay, cool, so all the rest is the same. Now uh, let's try this out. Uh, let's go to button setup. Let's change the script here to add blank labels. Cool. And let's see if we can add a couple of blanks. Let's try this out. Let's add, let's say we have three blanks. Okay. And what has happened now is that those blanks have shown up at the bottom. If we go and look at our print label sheet two and we do a preview, then we do uh, get a bunch of sheets here, but the blanks, well, we can't really see them Mm -mm -mm. 
they are are they even there let's have a look here print label sheet let's see uh, we do have them here they should be showing up at the top and let's do browse mode okay print label sheet Okay, so what we need to do is we need to do some sort of sorting and we can do that in here. We can do sort portal records, we can sort by blank. But what we need to do is if we sort by the value blank, records that don't have a value in that field are gonna show up top. So I need to do this in descending order. And if I do that, then my blanks actually do show up on top here. I just need to make sure that they also show up on top in my print. So then I need to do print sheet and I need to add a little sort here where I sort my records by the blank. And I need to make them descending. Okay, cool. So if we then, um, let's look at Our print label sheets. Let's see what that does. Print sheet. Go to layout. Sort records. Well, I, mean, I can't see it now. Let's see. Looks like my blanks aren't really showing up. Okay, and I think the reason my blanks are not showing up is because I have used, uh, let's go into edit layout, I've used uh, these fields from the products, well I should be using from the product print. Let's try that out. Um, description, and let's zoom the price from product print, okay. Okay, so now if I preview, then I do actually get my um, blank labels first and then I got all my other labels after that so very important to um, use the correct table occurrence so this way you could um, add blank labels to the top and let's try this one again let's print label sheets um, Oops. let's do this and then we're going to look at the preview here. There you go. So this is a good way to get all these blanks up on top. Okay, so this is um, a couple of different ways that you could go and it ended up becoming a pretty big kind of uh, big solution. Uh, but if you need this specific type of setup where you're printing a lot of labels, this could maybe help you be as efficient as you could possibly be. I hope this uh, helped you guys out a little bit. All right. Ciao. If you guys want to learn a ton more about FileMaker, you can head over to my Udemy page where I've got a bunch of entire FileMaker courses online. You can follow them and basically we make entire FileMaker systems from scratch and I'll take you uh, on the entire process step by step. There is even one that is uh, completely free, so you can just follow that free of charge and that is a beginner tutorial where we make an entire contact database. Um, that's a really fun one that you can follow that can teach you the basics of FileMaker. So head over there by following the links in the description and I'll see you guys there.